the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium is mourning the profound loss of Kobe, an eight-year-old yellow Labrador retriever who served as a cherished cheetah ambassador dog, Kobe, who had been a beloved member of the zoo's family since his arrival as a playful puppy in 2013, was humanely euthanized on December 30 after a rapid decline in health due to chronic arthritis in his neck and secondary spinal cord compression, his passing marks the end of an era for the zoo where he was not just a fixture in the animal programs department but a beloved companion and friend to both animals and humans alike. In a heartfelt statement, zoo officials expressed their deep sadness, it is with a heavy heart that we announce the passing of our beloved cheetah ambassador dog, Kobe. Over the past few weeks, Kobe's condition had deteriorated rapidly, with painful neck lesions causing severe neurological symptoms. The zoo staff faced the agonizing decision to let him go after a recent MRI at Ohio State University revealed a grim prognosis, the scan showed that corrective surgery would likely be unsuccessful, and Kobe's chances of regaining normal mobility or living without pain were extremely slim, this heartbreaking decision was made with the utmost consideration for Kobe's quality of life, ensuring that he did not suffer further, Kobe's presence at the zoo was nothing short of magical. From the moment he bounded into the lives of the zoo staff, his gentle and affectionate nature made him an irreplaceable part of the animal programs department. Kobe was more than just a companion, he was a nurturing presence, a mentor, and a steadfast friend to both humans and animals alike. His role in socializing a variety of animals, from cheetahs to otters, warthogs, and foxes, was critical to the success of the zoo's animal care programs. His calm and reassuring demeanor helped nervous or young animals feel safe and loved, allowing them to thrive in their new environments. It was not uncommon to see Kobe lying beside a skittish animal, his warm body providing a comforting presence that soothed their fears and anxieties. One of Kobe's most remarkable accomplishments was his work with two cheetah cubs, Bibi and Zemba, whom he helped raise from infancy, these young cheetahs, now thriving adults. Owe much of their confidence and stability to Kobe's steady presence during their formative years, Kobe would often be seen lying beside the cubs, offering his warmth and comfort, a soothing influence that was crucial to their development. His patience and gentleness with the cubs were not just a testament to his character but also a reflection of his deep understanding of the animals he helped to nurture. Whether it was guiding them through their first tentative steps or simply being there during moments of uncertainty. Kobe's influence on Bibi and Zemba was profound and lasting. Beyond his work with cheetahs, Kobe became known as the zoo's go to canine companion, especially for animals recovering from surgery or those needing extra care. His ability to sense when an animal was in distress and offer comfort was nothing short of extraordinary, many times. Animals that were anxious or fearful found solace in Kobe's presence, his mere proximity providing a calming effect that no human intervention could replicate. His keen sense of empathy allowed him to connect with animals on a level that was deeply intuitive, making him an indispensable part of the zoo's rehabilitation efforts. Kobe also played a significant role in mentoring other companion dogs at the zoo, including Cash and Cullen. The bond between the three dogs was palpable. They spent countless hours together playing, exploring, and simply enjoying each other's company. Their friendship was a source of joy for the zoo staff and a reminder of the deep connections that animals can form, not just with humans but with each other. Kobe's influence on Cash and Cullen was evident in their own roles as ambassador dogs, as they followed in his paw prints, carrying on the legacy of care and companionship that he established. Visitors to the zoo were often greeted by Kobe who would approach with a wagging tail and a friendly face. His enthusiasm for life and his ability to make each guest feel special were part of what made him such a beloved figure at the zoo. Whether interacting with a group of excited children or comforting an anxious animal, Kobe's warmth and kindness were always evident. His interactions with the public were not just a part of his job. They were a reflection of his genuine love for people and animals alike. Kobe had a unique way of making everyone he met feel valued. Whether they were a fellow zoo resident or a curious visitor, the zoo's statement concluded with a poignant tribute, Kobe was a pillar of our animal programs department and a treasured member of our zoo family. Though we are devastated by his loss, we find comfort in the thought that he has found a sunny spot across the Rainbow Bridge, napping happily and keeping an eye on his loved ones. This heartfelt message encapsulated the depth of Kobe's impact on the zoo and the void his absence has left in the hearts of those who knew him. As the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium reflects on Kobe's life and legacy, they ask the community to keep their animal programs team in their thoughts during this difficult time. 
Kobe's influence will endure in the many lives he touched, the animals he helped raise, and the countless hearts he warmed during his years at the zoo. His memory will continue to be a source of inspiration and comfort to all who knew him, ensuring that his legacy lives on for years to come. The staff, animals, and visitors alike will cherish the moments they shared with Kobe, celebrating a life well lived and a dog who truly made a difference in the world around him. Nandi, a shy cheetah residing at Turtleback Zoo in New Jersey, has found an unexpected yet perfect companion in Bowie, a gentle Labrador retriever. Since their introduction as young cub and puppy, the two have forged a bond that transcends mere friendship. Bowie has become Nandi's emotional anchor, helping her navigate the challenges of zoo life with a newfound sense of confidence and security. Cheetahs, by nature, are skittish and often prone to anxiety, especially when confronted with unfamiliar or stressful situations. Nandi, with her naturally timid disposition, was no exception. To help ease her nervousness and provide her with a sense of comfort, the zoo paired her with Bowie when they were both just a few weeks old. This practice, which has been effective in other zoos, allows big cats like Nandi to have a constant, calming companion during potentially overwhelming experiences, such as educational presentations. Whenever Nandi feels anxious or uncertain, she instinctively looks to Bowie, drawing reassurance from his calm demeanor and steady presence. It's a bond that's built on trust, and Bowie has proven to be a constant source of comfort for Nandi. Allowing her to face her fears with greater ease, over the course of the past year, this inseparable duo has only grown closer, despite the natural wariness that many might feel at the thought of a dog and a cheetah playing together. Bowie and Nandi's bond is so strong that they engage in playful wrestling matches, with Bowie never once intimidated by his spotty sister's size or strength. Their interactions are filled with joy and mutual respect, and Nandi expresses her contentment through loud, resonant purrs whenever Bowie is by her side, a clear and heartwarming sign of her happiness and trust. Charlotte Trapman O'Brien, a spokesperson for Turtleback Zoo, emphasized the critical role Bowie plays in Nandi's life, explaining, Bowie has a very important job here, which is to be her confidence builder. Cheetahs are naturally skittish. So one of the things that allows us to bring her out and do educational presentations is having Bowie by her side, with his reassuring presence. Bowie not only helps Nandi feel safe but also enables her to participate in these vital presentations, which are crucial for educating the public about cheetah conservation and the challenges these magnificent creatures face in the wild. The partnership between Bowie and Nandi serves a purpose that extends beyond the confines of the zoo with only about 7,000 cheetahs remaining in the wild. Their story does more than entertain and educate visitors, it inspires a deeper understanding of and commitment to protecting this vulnerable species. The sight of Nandi and Bowie together is a living testament to the power of companionship and the positive impact it can have on even the most unlikely pairings. Outside the zoo, dogs like Bowie play a crucial role in wildlife conservation efforts in parts of Africa. Trained dogs are employed to deter cheetahs from preying on livestock, thereby reducing conflicts between farmers and these endangered big cats. Samantha Wegman, who has been instrumental in Bowie's training, highlighted the importance of his calm demeanor, noting, we need him to be calm, that's his whole job with the cheetah, no matter what else is going on, if something startles her, she needs to look to him, and he needs to be calm. Bowie's calmness is his greatest asset, and it's what makes him such an effective support for Nandi. Bowie's training isn't limited to the zoo environment. Each night, he goes home with his handlers, where he's exposed to a variety of everyday situations, from car rides to the noise of honking traffic. This diverse exposure ensures that Bowie remains composed in all scenarios, making him the perfect companion for Nandi, who benefits immensely from his steady presence. Together, Nandi and Bowie are more than just best friends, they are ambassadors for their species. Demonstrating the profound impact that companionship can have on animals, both in captivity and in the wild, their story is a heartwarming reminder of the unique and powerful bonds that can form between species, offering hope, inspiration, and a deeper appreciation for the interconnectedness of all living beings. Whether educating zoo visitors about the importance of conservation or simply enjoying a playful romp together. Nandi and Bowie exemplify the extraordinary possibilities that arise when different species come together in harmony, highlighting the beauty of friendship in its purest form. Modest cottage on the outskirts of town lives Ella, a spirited woman in her 70s. Despite the passage of 71 years, Ella eagerly leaves her home each day to wander through the beautiful Norwegian wilderness, 
her walks mostly take her through a nearby forest, a place that has always been a sanctuary of peace and tranquility for her. One day, however, this serenity was shattered by a startling encounter. While walking her usual path through the woods, Ella suddenly heard a disturbingly close animal commotion, disturbing the forest's calm. Looking around, she saw no hunter, but she felt certain that one must be lurking nearby, intent on hunting. Filled with determination and undeterred by fear, Ella decided to continue her walk. Soon, she stumbled upon a heart-wrenching sight, a young deer lying in the middle of the path, gravely injured. Ella's heart filled with concern for the small creature, and without hesitation, she approached the helpless deer. Although it was young and not fully grown, Ella's desire to help only grew stronger. Though she was no medical expert and lacked proper veterinary skills, Ella knew her limits but was resolute in her desire to save its life. She wasn't expecting miracles, she simply wanted to do her best. Rushing to get water, she gently moistened the deer's lips, hoping that this small act of kindness would provide some comfort and strength to the animal. Initially, the deer showed no interest in Ella's aid. She carefully inspected its wounds, cleaned them with antiseptic from her house, and wrapped them meticulously with cloth and bandages. Over the following days, the deer's condition gradually improved, and fortunately, the wounds were not as severe as they could have been. Ella became meticulous about changing the bandages daily, and slowly but surely, the deer began to recover, as the deer grew stronger. An unusual closeness developed between it and Ella as if the deer understood that she was its benefactor. One morning, Ella woke to find the deer gone from the porch, slowly walking in the yard and somewhat unsteady on its feet due to the injury at the base of its front leg, but it seemed accustomed to the inconvenience. The deer showed no discomfort in Ella's presence, and seemed pleased to be near her, dragging its feet as it approached. Months later, the deer became a regular visitor around Ella's house, growing stronger and with no trace of its previous limp, as if it had never been wounded, the deer's recovery was fortunate because in other countries, deer often end up as exotic dishes on dinner tables, hunted by those driven to chase after their antlers, which would end up as commodities in the market. Ella is not a strict vegetarian, but this experience often reminded her of the painful realities behind nature's law of survival. As the seasons changed, the deer ventured deeper into the woods and did not return to Ella's cabin for days. On its return, Ella would stroke its back and feed it warm food. Six years passed, and the deer grew stronger and its antlers more formidable, yet it never forgot the old lady and visited often, especially in the winter, banging its antlers against her window to call her out. Ella would respond with bread, and spending time together became a routine they both enjoyed. For Ella, this was not just a responsibility but a deep-seated affection. Witnessing the deer's frequent visits and healthy growth filled her heart with peace and pride. As years passed, Ella, now 81, often spoke deeply of this extraordinary friendship that transcended species, describing the deer as a magnificent creature with beautiful antlers. Thankfully now out of the hunter's sight, the deer mostly came in winter, less so in spring and summer, probably living hard in the distant mountains. But every sighting was a joy for Ella, making this unexpected encounter a warm and precious chapter in her life. After listening to this tale, what are your impressions? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Your insights are valuable to us. Now, we have another engaging story. Let's proceed to the next one, in Fulcher, Texas. A local resident made a surprising discovery early one morning when he heard unfamiliar snorting sounds emanating from the vicinity of a house currently under construction. Curious, he followed the noises and was shocked to find a deer bound by ropes in the backyard of the property, sensing that help had arrived. The deer ceased its distressed noises as soon as it saw the man, without hesitation. The resident freed the deer from its constraints and immediately contacted the local police for assistance. Officer Kevin Zaytang responded to the call and arrived on the scene promptly. He found the deer with a rope still entangled around its antlers, which he carefully removed. As the deer was liberated, it lingered in the area, which was unexpected. Officer Zaytang, along with some neighbors, began to look into the peculiar situation trying to piece together how and why the deer had ended up tied up. While gathering information, Officer Zaytang returned to where the deer had been found and was taken aback to see it still there, now standing behind the door of the nearby house. Even though it had just regained its freedom, the deer seemed hesitant to return to the forest and instead appeared to have a different intention. The deer approached Officer Zaytang and stayed close by his side. Seemingly unwilling to venture back into the woods, 
it seemed he wanted to hang out with us, Officer Zaytang commented, as the officer made his way back to his patrol car, the deer followed him, maintaining eye contact as if to express gratitude and a desire for companionship, despite the touching interaction, Officer Zaytang was mindful of the safety concerns for both the deer and the local community, he gently encouraged the deer back into the woods before driving away. Not expecting to encounter the animal again, however, the story took another twist just two days later, Officer Zaytang was at the same location, being interviewed by ABC News about the incident, recounting the gentle and sweet nature of the deer, in an almost serendipitous moment, as he spoke, the same deer emerged from the woods, there he is, Officer Zaytang exclaimed, visibly surprised by the deer's reappearance, as the deer approached, it affectionately nuzzled him allowing the officer to scratch its head in a heartwarming reunion that was captured during the interview. Meanwhile, Officer Kevin's compassionate actions towards Hank, the deer, also underscore the heartfelt connections humans can form with wildlife. When Hank repeatedly returned to the officer, showing a clear preference for human company over the wild, it became evident that a standard release back into the wilderness wouldn't be suitable. The officer's decision to involve Texas parks and wildlife ensured that Hank would find a new home tailored to his needs. The game wardens facilitated Hank's relocation to a well-maintained animal sanctuary where he could live safely and more in keeping with his behavior. Surrounded by professionals trained to care for such animals, both instances highlight an extraordinary level of empathy and responsibility towards wildlife. From Officer Kevin's thoughtful handling of Hank's situation to Simon Cowell's urgent medical intervention to save a wounded deer, these stories reflect a deep understanding of the needs and well-being of animals. Such acts of kindness not only save lives but also remind us of the profound bond that can exist between humans and the natural world. Simon and his team found themselves in unfamiliar territory, striving to protect a wounded deer from the harsh elements of her new surroundings. One member, Emma, stepped in to administer the necessary medical care. She carefully cradled the deer in her lap, creating a makeshift operating table, and began the meticulous process of suturing the animal's laceration. At the facility, Simon's team was ready and waiting with all the necessary equipment to treat the deer's injuries. The experienced veterinarians swiftly sedated the deer, thoroughly cleaned the wound, and began the delicate process of stitching the gash closed. The meticulous care and attention to detail during the procedure were crucial, not only to heal the physical injury but also to minimize the risk of stress-induced complications such as capture myopathy. Thankfully, the deer's skull was unharmed, which simplified the procedure and allowed Emma to work more swiftly. After stitching the wound, she meticulously cleaned the area and administered pain relief medications. The team exhaled a collective sigh of relief as this critical phase was completed. However, they faced a lingering concern. It was uncertain whether the deer would fully recover and regain its normal functions. Later, Simon and a colleague returned the deer to the forest where she had been found, hoping that her natural habitat would foster her recovery once the shock and trauma began to subside. Watching her closely, Simon offered words of encouragement to his team, explaining that if the deer laid her head back, it might be a sign of her giving in to her injuries, in a poignant moment. The deer's head did indeed fall back, a heartrending signal of her struggle. Despite this, Simon's resolve only strengthened. He gently lifted her head and spoke to her with tenderness. Hey, sweet girl, you have to show the world you're tough. You can't let this keep you down. Come on, get up, darling. His words were full of hope, but the deer struggled to stand and soon collapsed again. Simon's determination did not waver. He remained by her side, his spirit unbroken. I know you're hurt. I know you're bruised but I trust you, you can make it, he continued, his voice a steady beacon of support, after several attempts, the deer managed to stand and even took a few steps, but tragically, she fell once more, witnessing her struggle was deeply disheartening for Simon, who began to doubt the efficacy of their rescue efforts, he wondered if she would ever regain the graceful life she once led or if all hope was lost, despite facing a wave of uncertainty. Simon's resolve remained unshaken, cradling the delicate deer in his arms, he ventured deeper into the serenity of the forest, his intuition told him that a quieter, more secluded spot might provide the sanctuary necessary for the deer's recuperation, carefully, he set the deer down on the soft forest floor, supporting her as she made tentative attempts to stand and walk, Simon watched intently, his heart caught between hope and apprehension, 
as he contemplated what the future might hold for this fragile creature, as he observed, a noticeable transformation began to unfold within the deer, its ears twitched upwards, a clear sign of alertness, and it seemed as though a new wave of vitality was coursing through its veins. With each cautious step, the deer gathered strength, until it was not merely walking but bounding energetically through the underbrush. Go on, sweetheart. Simon cheered, his voice thick with emotion and encouragement. As he watched the deer regain its zest for life, the sight of the deer, now vibrant and full of life, sprinting into the wilderness struck a chord deep within Simon, he stood there, a solitary tear tracing his cheek, profoundly moved by the sheer beauty and resilience of nature, a profound sense of tranquility enveloped him as he witnessed the natural world's remarkable ability to heal and renew itself, this poignant moment a testament to the enduring spirit of wildlife. Was one Simon would cherish for a lifetime, now, consider if you were to find a deer in your own backyard, how would you react to such an unexpected encounter, what measures would you take to ensure the safety of both yourself and the deer, we invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below, we're eager to hear from you, that concludes today's story, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, see you next time.